Hey, this is Isara with UX in Motion. Welcome to another exciting tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to take any device image, like this iPhone here, and uh, put your design onto it. So, you know, behind a reflection, in perspective, all that good stuff from any image you can find that has a screen, basically, you can do this. So the way we're gonna do this is, I'm gonna show you how I source a high quality image online, and then we're gonna jump over into Photoshop, and I'm gonna make some guides and a reflection and then jump back over in After Effects and we're gonna put it all together. So let's get started. First of all, I wanna show you that I do have a bunch of these for free that I made. They're really awesome. Uh, at my website, uxemotion.net slash templates. I've got an iPhone. There's a whole bunch of different uh, like iPhone ones. Uh, this one includes gray, silver, and gold, which is really cool. Apple Watch. Um, MacBook Pro, these are all free and they come with these six presets that I made up. There are these industry standard presets for dribble, 720p, uh, 1080p, these four three sizes and 4K if you're working that large. And the way it works is you just find one you like, click the button, put in your email here and I'll send it to you. It's that easy. So make sure you head over there and grab some because they're awesome. But if you want to create your own from scratch, that's why you're watching this lesson. So let's do that now. So what I typically do to source a high res image file is I'll just do a search for something like iPhone 6 and I'll go over to the search tools. Uh, I'll do images first actually. <laughs> search tools, size, large, and I'll just you know scroll until I find something that looks cool. Make sure it's high res enough. You could definitely do like these square ones. These ones that are straight to the camera are super easy, but for this one, I do want to do one in perspective so you get that skill acquired. So I do like this one, I think it's cool. So we're gonna view this, looks awesome, 1920 by 1080, love it. View the image, and I'm gonna save that to the desktop. Boom, okay. Now, let's head over into Photoshop, and I'm going to quickly add guides and a reflection. So, by zooming in, you can just zoom in on this guy. Make sure you have your guides out. This is not gonna be a Photoshop tutorial. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how to make some guides here. I'm assuming you know how to use Photoshop already, which is why I'm showing you how to do it in uh, Photoshop. Both of these steps could be accomplished in After Effects, but I find that you know, for most of the folks out there, they're, they're really good at uh, uh, Photoshop, really comfortable and it's just easier to set up the file this way than it is in After Effects. But honestly, it's sometimes it's six of one, half dozen of another, like it totally doesn't matter. I just prefer going into Photoshop first. Uh, I can't really tell you why, just because it's kind of just familiar, I guess. Okay, so we're gonna do this last corner here. These don't have to be like 100% totally perfect. We'll make sure it is when we're done. Okay, so we have these four corners here drawn by these little these little crosshairs so I can find these now in After Effects and now I'm gonna hide these guides and I'm gonna create a quick and dirty reflection using the pen tool make sure it's set to shape and you'll see that it doesn't have to be super precise and match all the contours of the phone you'll see why in a second so I'm just gonna rough this out looks like this that's awesome jump over to my uh, layer styles in the blending options. I'm gonna just drop down the uh, fill opacity and I'm gonna put on a gradient overlay. And I have one, that, a custom one that I've been using. It's really simple, I'll, I'll explain it to you right now. It's white on both ends. You can double click the colors, see that it's white. And then one of the ends, the opacity is set to zero and the other is set to 100. And that lets me create a simple gradient like this. And you can angle it however you want. I'm gonna angle it something around like that for now. Awesome, close this out. Now I'm gonna deal with these, you know, not so cool looking ghetto regions right now. I'm gonna create a mask, hit B for brush, make sure I'm painting with black. I'm just quickly gonna just paint these out because this is a very subtle thing, you know, like you don't have to, it doesn't have to be super precise because it's a gradient and, and you're you're not gonna see it in this opacity as much. You're probably gonna knock it down to like 30%, so it's more subtle. So you can actually get away with winging it a whole lot. It's pretty sweet, actually. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna call it iPhone template. Awesome, love it. We're gonna go over to After Effects now and make it happen. So I'm just gonna create a new document now by hitting Command-0, or not 0, but O for open and I'm gonna 
hit escape so now it cleared out after effects it's kind of a neat fast way of doing that and i'm just going to import my file so command i select my iphone template that i just made this file composition retain layer sizes that's awesome double click that and here's what i got just what we created in photoshop now let's add a ui to it so i've already pulled out this ui animation from a previous tutorial it's this jelly one so we're going to grab that and all I'm going to do, and yes, if you didn't know that, by the way, yes, you can import After Effects project files into other After Effects project files. It's really, really cool. So if you didn't know that, that could be just the whole value. You just got value from that right away. So I'm going to add that on top, and you can see it's just a animation like this. It's big, so it's not like showing up right now. Now, the way we're going to get this on the phone is by using an effect. It's this really cool effect called the corner pin. So if you, if you hit Command-Shift-T, it brings up your effect controls panel. You can right-click in there, and I've already been using it, so it, the most recent one shows up here. But if you're looking for it, it's under uh, Distort Corner Pin. Distort Corner Pin. You select that. Nothing happens. You're like, what's up? You saw it. You're a jerk. But check this out. Now you have these little circles that you can't really see unless I zoom in here that are exactly where the bounding edge of your layer is. The, this tool is amazing. It's really simple, but it's perfect. So now you just click and drag these little corners out, and you'll notice that it's not affecting the actual bounding box of your layer. This is actually an effect that After Effects is applying. And now look at that, it just snaps. Make sure you have snapping turned on, and make sure you have uh, snap to guides, because if they're not snapping, probably those aren't turned on. Okay. So now I've just added that on top of here. And now I can go in and finesse this and get it right where I want. So you could, in theory, skip the guide steps. I find it just makes it a lot faster and a lot cleaner to get you going right away. So you can go over here, and you're just going to clean up this edge a little bit. OK, so we're just not seeing the other UI behind it. We're just going to eat into that just a little bit. And it's, if it's a little bit of tiny little bit of pixels, you know, that may be totally fine. So we can zoom out and we're like, oh yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Okay, so we have that. And now we have the reflection that we made, which we didn't even name this layer. That's how fast we were working here. And we have this reflection on top. The opacity in Photoshop, I'm just going to jump back, jump back here, was 30%. And you'll notice that if you hit T for opacity, this 30% is preserved. So you could, you know, if you're like, I want to see a little stronger, you can do that. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that when I imported this animation, it'll play out beyond the end of it because I didn't crop the animation timeline. You can see it only goes as far as the work area here. If you control click your work area and go trim comp to work area, now when I go back to my main comp, it's actually ended there. So I can hit O on the timeline and then N for end, and then I've closed the whole thing off. And if you hit shift, uh, question mark, I don't know, that was a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts really fast. Uh, if you hit shift question mark, it fits your canvas to the work area here. And now you can do a RAM preview and you can see that everything is just working totally awesome. So I hope you liked this. I hope you got some value from it. This is a great technique to be able to create your own After Effects template files in no time whatsoever. We just did that in a couple minutes. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.